Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to Empire's SMP. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we are finally going to restart the Ant Hill project. And I've made a couple of changes to how I want to do this. If you saw the last episode, you'll know that I ended up tearing the entire thing down, and I wanted to switch the color palette around. So instead of going from bottom to top like this, the color palette is going to kind of run from top to bottom bottom if that makes any sense so we're going to have the terracotta and the dripstone and all of the mushroom blocks and stuff towards the top and the bottom layer is going to be all of the sand and sandstone merging up through the wood types and that's going to make it feel like the desert is kind of gathering around the ant hill instead of the ant hill just kind of being plonked down in the middle of the desert it's gonna blend nicer it's gonna look better i think and i have been smelting up a bunch of smooth sandstone i feel like this is going to be the best thing to build the bottom part out of because it can blend with the sand without too much texture getting involved and from a distance you don't see all of the sandstone texture you don't get the carved sandstone look where it looks very tiley like this you end up with a lot more of a smooth natural looking structure you can even make slabs and stairs out of this so i think that's the direction that we're going to go with it and i'm going to spend a lot of today's episode building up the ant hill but since that's going to be a lot of building we're going to do a couple of time lapses but we have a little bit of other action to get to as well and i wanted to include this in an episode because otherwise the ant hill would appear in one section and be gone the next lizzie the ocean queen came to visit me the other day and she wanted to drop off an axolotl for me to deal with the salmon population in the river to make sure that the codfather is still happy when he comes to visit but she also had a couple of odd questions pix hi oh my goodness it's an emergency what's a uh, what uh emergency i need to borrow your brain oh uh, okay uh i kind of need that but uh how long do you need it for i just need to ask a question oh okay well that's easier good what is a birthday a birthday i mean yeah it's 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 the day that you were born, but, I mean, like, in the celebrations. Do, do you not know what a birthday is, Lizzie? No, I've never had a birthday. I mean, <laughs> you probably have, but maybe you just didn't know it. Okay, so a birthday is like a day when you celebrate the day that you were born, because it happens, like, the same day every year, I guess. So, like, you know, you just mark on a calendar when somebody was born, and then... After a year has passed, you're like, hooray, and then you celebrate that person. You maybe give them a cake, maybe some, some nice presents, just to kind of maybe celebrate the fact that they're alive. I don't know, I've never really thought about it before. Uh, okay, and how many birthdays have you had? I mean, I guess like 34 at this point. It, I mean, it, it gets a little bit confusing, but yeah, like I, I guess wow. 34. I mean, how many, do you know how many you've had? I don't know, but I think... I'm kind of old. Okay, well, I mean, that's that's not a problem. People celebrate their birthday at any age. In fact, I feel like birthday celebrations should always come with cake. So I guess let, let's let's make a cake together real fast. <gasps> I've, I, okay. I've recently brought something to Pixandria that's going to be very useful for this, but we need to grab a couple of ingredients. So step into my kitchen, which is also the storage room. Wow, it's very open in here. Yeah, I, I, I never really quite got done with the roof, and then I kind of decided I like being able to see the sun and yeah. the ominous energy crystals floating over my my base but, i guess it uh, doesn't really rain in the desert huh? not so much no um and okay i've got three wheat i've got i can never remember if it's one egg and two sugar or one sugar and two eggs so i'm gonna bring two of each uh and the last thing we'll need is some milk so i guess i'm gonna make a couple of buckets real fast and Come over to the river where you can actually check in on the turtles over there. Um, yes, the turtles, and, uh, I should. Yeah, I've got a friend over there who'll be able to supply us with some milk. In the river? You'll understand. You'll understand when we get there. So it's uh, it's down here past the exploded remains of the Mithland Embassy that, you know, may have oh, slightly slightly that ruined. Was here? Yeah, it, it I, I kind of I kind of blew up over here somewhere. Wow, that is quite the explosion. Yeah, there were a lot of them and all of my stuff got destroyed. I don't want to talk about it, but uh, <laughs> over here in the river, this is where I put the turtle sanctuary. So the turtles are <gasps> kind of, they're fenced in because otherwise they'll just go all the way up the river and I'll never see them again. Um, but but it's here... so cute! It's perfect! Uh, there's a couple of eggs that are currently awaiting hatching in there, but um, here's a question. Have you got the advancement for getting in a boat with a goat no there's an advancement for that yeah wow. there we go <laughs> that is so fun it's just a little a little thing i like to do with with everybody so um i didn't know you could do that so goats will also give you milk 
<laughs> as well as cows, uh, so you can get goat milk that way. But if you put, uh, you got three buckets of milk, you'll probably need a bit of inventory space for this. You need three wheat, you need two sugar and one egg, or one sugar and two eggs, I forget which. And with all of that, you should be able to make a cake. <laughs> I got a cake. Nice. Uh, put that down on the crafting table. I will be right back. And the best part about a birthday cake is candles. Aww. So, can you light it? Uh, you can light it, actually. Um, but you can only put one candle on a cake at a time. <laughs> Um, so... Well, this is the first birthday I ever known about. Yeah, I was going to say, you might as well just start with one, right? Yeah. Well, there you go. That's how to have a birthday. Um, <laughs> and then you eat the cake afterwards and the candles pop off and it's and it's great. Wow. But uh, have a slice if you're hungry. If not, uh, take the recipe. It's, uh, it's an old family recipe passed down from generation to generation. Ah, uh, desert special. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's probably got a bit of sand baked into it, but it <laughs> adds to the texture. Thank you so much for helping me celebrate my birthday. Do you? Are you still interested in a pet axolotl yes, this river here? Yes, absolutely. Uh, bring it down underneath the bridge and it'll help me get rid of all the salmon that come up around here. Ugh, yes, disgusting salmon. This is a highly trained soldier fighting against salmon. Oh, awesome. I'm I'm honored to have him in my service. So down here would be best. A lot of salmon tend to sort of group up around here under the bridge. I don't see many of ah. them right now, but they probably, they like migrate up and down streams. They're in so. hiding. Yeah. yeah. They sense the soldier on its way. <laughs> I will unleash him right here. Very good. Yes, no, he's highly trained. I can, I can see, I can see that right now. Yeah, he might just be getting the lay of the land first. Yeah, that's fair. You got to check the borders. Maybe uh, a pincer attack or something is probably mm -hmm, going to work mm -hmm. best. Maybe you know, summoning some comrades or something. <laughs> I hope so. Well, um, take care of the axolotl. Goodbye. See Thank you, you soon. for the cake. <laughs> well, as you can see, that axolotl soldier proved pretty effective because right now there are some squid over there in the river, but I do not see a salmon for the entire length of the river. No salmon to be found. Well, actually, there's a couple down there, but I'm sure the axolotl will come along and take care of them. There were a bunch more in this area before he dropped in. And so with that taken care of, we can now go and focus on the anthill. I'm going to start building some of this stuff up. And as promised, we're going to do that in the form of a time lapse.
And I would have loved to get more done in that time lapse, but I feel like we've already made a pretty significant start. Having built the odd mountain occasionally before, it feels kind of weird to be building this so close to the town. But the idea, for those of you who haven't quite got the picture yet, is that the ant hill is sort of going to be... I don't know if I should be landing on this. This is a mystic crystal of ancient power that's kind of terrifying, actually. The Ant Hill is kind of going to be the thing that Pixandria was built around. So even though I'm building it right now after I built a bunch of stuff in the town, the idea is that the Ant Hill was going to have been here first. It's like the most ancient thing in Pixandria, and maybe it was the place that people first colonized, and the idea is that we're going to be having holes in the rock face here and there where people are going to be able to come in and out, and there are going to be roads and pathways and tunnels that dig into the mountain like a kind of nest of ants or termites or, you know, rabbit warren, that kind of thing. The gradient is slowly taking shape here. We've got some oak logs finally starting to go in after all of these rounds of different sandstone textures and birch logs. I still have a little bit of texturing to do. I still want to add some slabs. I still want to add some full birch logs and oak logs to cover up the end textures of all of this stuff. But honestly, I'm going to be looking at this from ground level in Pixandria, or maybe from the occasional rooftop balcony where people will have a neat little view of some of the other balconies and stuff that are going to be exiting from the Ant Hill. So this is just a first pass right now, or well, a second pass. Pass and a half, I guess, because the first one kind of ended a little abruptly. But I'm liking the technique that we're going with here. This is part of the kind of strategy I have with building this up is to actually not do the wireframe thing that I mentioned previously. I'll come down here and I can demonstrate a little bit with the sandstone how we're building this whole structure up instead of using the wireframe method. So the way I decided to build this, because I kind of like having a few more of these like flatter spaces on the outside, it's kind of more difficult to tell from here, but that's a good example. That wall over there has sort of interlocking and overlapping shapes made out of sandstone, the smooth sandstone at the bottom but then obviously some texture rising into it as it goes and as you can see the regular sandstone this kind of sandstone with the cracks in it kind of forms a like slightly shallower gradient and then it goes back upwards a little bit more once we start to introduce the birch wood but to create these flat areas all we really need to do is create a kind of like a three by three area maybe with like a block missing here and there and kind of overlap them in waves almost so i'm starting to kind of introduce shapes like this and maybe this one comes out there that one comes out there and you end up with a much more interesting texture of a wall that can curve slightly it can curve in shallow ways it can curve in slightly more steep ways if you want to have it round a corner all you really need to do is stick a block in the corner there and then start to build around the side like that maybe make the shape look a little less even and what you have is a quite an organic looking wall but one which has larger flat areas to prevent it from kind of looking like this where everything looks very blocky and kind of like a cubert map i don't know if you, any guys remember cubert but like it stops looking like everything is made out of steps and starts looking a little bit more organic organically shaped. And I have a really hard time creating shapes like that when I'm working from a wireframe. So I decided to slightly build it up in a more organic way, save the giant mountain skeleton from the skyline, and so far I'm really enjoying the experience. It is of course taking a while, and we are having to build around the tentacles of the demonic monstrosity currently plaguing our lives, but overall I think it's working pretty well, and now that the oak wood is starting to go in, I love the warm tone it adds to the gradient. I think this is all looking pretty fantastic so far. Cannot wait to start moving up into the other materials. We've got some dripstone, some mushroom blocks, and some terracotta to crown the entire thing. We'll mix a few more of these things in. We'll do another pass for texture, another pass for greenery, and then obviously all of the entrances and stuff will go in there as well. Lots of stages to this project, but I think it's going to look spectacular once it is done, and hopefully we'll be able to tie the rest of Pixandria around the Ant Hill. Speaking of the rest of Pixandria, though, I have a notion for something back over here at the residential area. I really want to add some more green spaces into here, and as you might have noticed, I've been using rockets a lot lately. I just kind of find them a little bit more convenient when I'm working on so many of these flat areas of land, and honestly, using Riptide to get up to the top of the Ant Hill as I'm building it gets a little bit tedious. So yes, I have been using rockets, and Pearlescent Moon of the Beanstalk Kingdom, which I believe is what it's called now, 
is the only person on the server who is allowed to auto farm sugarcane. Pearl is the one who has the setup that allows her to auto farm some of this stuff because that's kind of like her empire's department is all of the farming and whatnot. However, I see nothing that says that we cannot harvest the sugarcane manually because that is really what I've been doing. If you come over here, I've got a little sugarcane patch along this side of the river that I have on occasion been using to top up my supply of paper when I need it for books and rockets and that kind of thing. And I'm thinking, what if we move all of this over to an area of Pixandria and make it a decorative feature, but also one that occasionally I come through, do a bit of trimming and maintenance and harvest the entire thing for sugarcane. Not automatically, manually, but at least in a way that I can get a decent supply of sugarcane without having to do any of Pearl's flying through hoops challenges. Because people have been round to my neck of the woods a couple of times with the aforementioned challenges, and I gotta say, while I'm fairly confident in my flying ability, I smacked my head on my own wall a couple of times trying to fly through my own builds. So the idea of doing that in other people's builds, frankly, I find a little bit embarrassing. And so I'm gonna try and dodge that responsibility entirely by setting up my own sugarcane farm over here. And sugarcane even grows naturally on sand. So I frankly think this is a match made in heaven. I don't see why Pearl would have any problems with me doing this whatsoever. And part of me really wishes that ice would melt automatically in a desert. I expect that would probably cause a lot of problems, but I, <laughs> it does feel like the desert sun should be doing the work that I now have to do, breaking all of these by hand, or maybe with a fortune pickaxe to make things a little faster. Can you grow sugarcane on moss? Hey, of course you can, of course. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense, actually. <laughs> Could you grow sugarcane on moss without water nearby? No, which is weird because it does support small drip leaf, but <laughs> I kind of like the idea of making this sugarcane garden sort of a patchwork of moss here and there as well, because we can, of course, plant the sugarcane directly on the sand, but it's kind of nice to have a little bit more greenery in here. And I'm also going to conceal all of the water sources here with sandstone slabs, which also means that I don't end up falling in, but those should stay waterlogged, so it doesn't have any effect on the sugarcane. We can update it, it can grow, it can break, and all of the sugarcane remains here. So we do need a little bit of greenery around the place. There we go. It's getting there. It's getting there. I managed to put some moss carpet over the top of some of the uh, the sugarcane water sources around here. And I think that's actually working pretty well. I think I have to place a few more sugarcane here and there in some of the patches that I've missed. But all in all, I think this is looking pretty good. And we can probably decorate a few things here and there to break things up a bit if we want to go for a slightly different look. But I think having some of the azalea leaves and the cacti and the bamboo and everything kind of makes this feel like a cool naturey kind of spot. Almost like a bamboo grove has sprung up here by the fertile lands of the river. And maybe we'll make the land around here look a little bit nicer with less of the sand and sandstone, a little bit more of the moss and everything coming up from the river. I think that's looking pretty good so far. Let's take a quick look from the air. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Little green spot back here. And I kind of want to leave some paths around the outside. Maybe a path that leads down to the river here because I still plan on building boats in here when I have the time. But there's just a lot of other projects going on at once right now in the Ant Hill. Still looming large up there, reminding me to get back to it in a second. The last thing I want to do in this episode, though, is to do with this, because of course we need to get our revenge on Mythical Sausage, and I have been thinking long and hard about how exactly I want to do that. I need to drop something particularly explosive on Mythical Sausage, and I know just the person to help me. 